All right, y'all. So number one, I would probably just throw it into my calculator. So let me see what we got. We got a f of x equals x to the third minus four. So I'm just going to throw that in my calculator and see what we get. All right, so I'm going to go to y equals, clear that out. And we had x to the third. I'm going to go x, exponent three. I'm going to step back down and do minus four. All right, and I'm just going to hit graph and see what we get. So if you notice, it brought the graph down. So I'm going to go back to that test and see which one brought that graph down. So A went left, right, uh, B went right, C went up. Looks like D went down like my graph. So we're going to pick D and hit to the next. All right, y'all, this one wants to find the function value, F negative 3, when F of X equals 3X squared minus 4X minus 2. All right, y'all, so remember, we had, uh, we're finding f of negative 3, and they gave me the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. So all we got to do is put this negative 3 in for these two x's. So f of negative 3 will equal 3 times negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 3 minus 2. Now, at this point, you can throw it in your calculator. It'll spit out the answer quick. Um, I'll work this one by hand. So the first thing you would do is figure out that exponent. So negative 3 squared would be negative 3 times negative 3, which makes that a positive 9. And then I'm just going to bring everything else down. Now I'll multiply the 3 times 9 and get 27. Here we're subtracting a four times a negative three. That's gonna give us a positive 12 through there. And then at the end is our minus two. All right, so now we just add them up. 27 and 12 is 39. 39 minus two gives me 37. So we would go back to our test and punch in a 37 on that. And y'all, it's multiple choice. We go with A for 37 and move to the next. All right, so y'all, this is on y'all. Is that graph a function? So what you got to ask yourself, does that graph pass the vertical line test? So remember, if you run vertical lines down that graph, it can only intersect it once everywhere for that to be a function. And y'all, if you notice, if you were to draw vertical lines down that, <laughs> it would only intersect your graph at once anywhere you go. <clears throat> so that would be a yes, that one is is a function, okay? So remember, vertical lines intersect at once. All right, y'all, let me write this down because I'm going to solve this in on my calculator using my matrix. So I got X minus Y plus 4Z equals 25. 3X plus z equals 5, x plus 2y plus z equals negative 5. All right, so I'm going to punch this in the calculator. So I'm going to get off this screen here. I right, remember to punch it in the Calculator, we got to go to the matrix. To get to the matrix, you hit second, 
and then the X negative one key on the left side. <laughs> we're going to edit the matrix first. That's how we put it in. So we're going to go over to edit and hit enter. So where was edit again? Um, so let me start it over. So you're going to hit second X negative one to get to the matrix. Uh -huh. And then you're going to arrow over on the top row. You'll go past math and go to the edit. Okay. Now, once we're on edit, just hit enter. Uh -huh. Um, these will be three times four, three rows by four columns. And mine's already got that on it. So I'm just going to hit enter and enter. Then it's going to come down to where we put in all the coefficients of the equations. So the first equation was X minus Y plus 4Z equal 28. I mean, 25. So I got a one for my X, enter. Now remember, hit enter after every number we put in. Then I had a negative Y, so that'd be a negative one, enter. 4Z would be a four, enter. And then the answer on the first row was 25, enter. That's going to bring me down to my second row. I had three X's, so that'd be three, enter. I do not have a Y on this one. So since I do not have a Y, I'm going to put zero. And y'all, on your test, it's probably going to be missing that Y on that second equation. So remember to put a zero there. I had one Z, so that'd be one enter. And then I had five for the answer, so five enter. That brings me down to my last row. I had one Z, so I would do one enter. I mean, one X. Two Y would be two enter. One Z would be one enter. And then it had an answer of a negative five. So I put my negative five and enter. All my numbers have been entered. So now we quit this screen by hitting second button, the blue button, and then right to the right of that, that mode. If you notice above it, it says quit. So when you hit the blue button and the mode button, it quits the screen. So now we've got our matrix put into the calculator. Now we got to tell it we want to do the operation to reduce it to give us the answers. So for the second time, you're going to hit second, X negative one for the matrix. But y'all, this time, arrow right to math. Once you got math highlighted, arrow down until you find RREF. Once you find RREF, you're going to hit enter. It's going to bring it on the screen. So now, we're wanting it to reduce our matrix. So now we got to go grab that matrix. So for the third time, I'm going to hit second, X negative one. So my matrix is the first matrix A, so I'm going to hit enter. It brings the matrix on the screen. So now it says R-R-E-F-A. Y'all, when we hit enter, the last column of numbers on the right side, the zero, negative five, and five, those are my answers. Zero, negative five, five. So we're looking for that on that answer sheet. So let's go to that screen. And y'all remember we had zero, negative five, five. All right, y'all, so let's see. We had, what I say, zero, negative five, five. So on this list, that looks like B. So we're going to choose B and then hit next. Now we'll say this, it had a no solution. There's no no solutions on this test, okay? They all have answers. Hey, let me make this one a little bigger so y'all can tell me what the domain is. Now remember, the domain is my X values. So you want to start me at the smallest X value and end me at the largest X value. Negative four, four. Negative four, four. And y'all, if y'all look on the right side over here, D has negative four, four. 
So y'all just remember on this problem, X to X, okay? All right, so you did good on that. So we would go to the next. All right, y'all, let me write this one down because we'll work this one on the pad. 2X minus 9Y is going to be greater than or equal to a negative 2. All right, so I'm going to work this by hand just to get my equation to put into my calculator. Um, once I get my equation to put into my calculator, then we'll shade it and do all that fun stuff, okay? So we want to solve it for the y. So if we're solving for y, we need to move the 2x to the other side. So y'all, I'm just going to come in and subtract that 2x from both sides. So that bring down my negative nine y. It's going to be greater than or equal. Now, order don't matter over here. What matters is that you don't add them together because they're not like terms. So you can keep them in the order. I got them up here and do ne negative two minus two x. All right, now we need to divide all three of these by that negative nine. Now remember, since you're dividing by negative, you got to reverse the inequality. So it was greater than or equals, it now becomes a less than or equals. So remember, reverse the inequality when we divide by negative numbers, okay? Because now these negatives here will cancel, giving me a y less than or equal. Negative two over negative nine makes that a positive two nights. Same thing back here to negative two divided by negative nine will make that a positive two over nine X. So this equation we're about to put into the calculator, we're going to shade in and then we'll be able to tell A, B, C, or D on our graphs. Now make sure one thing, um, since this has equals on it, when I graph it, it's going to be a solid line. So this will be a solid line. It's less than, so it's going to be shaded below. Okay. Um, because that makes a difference on the line being uh, solid or dotted. And whether we shade above or below. So y'all, let's take this equation and go put it into that calculator. So I'm going to go to y equals and clear this out. All right, so I had 2 over 9. Now remember, if you wanted to look like fractions, hit the alpha button, the green button, and the y equals, and hit enter. It'll bring up fraction boxes. So I can put two over nine in that one. Then I'm going to arrow right, put my plus. And then I'm going to hit alpha y equals again to get another fraction box and hit enter. And I'm going to put over my two over nine in that one. Then I'm going to arrow to the right and put my x. So I now have the equation we have in the... Uh, paper we worked out. Now remember to shade this, to shade it, you arrow all the way left to the left side of that equals. All right, then you're going to hit enter. So right now it's on the line. So when I hit enter, I'm shading below. So remember, I want the triangle that's on the bottom like this one. Now remember, on the newer TI-84CEs, when you hit enter, it'll bring up a box, go to where the line is, and choose the triangle that's below, okay? Now, once I do that, I'm going to hit graph. So we see my graph going uphill to the right, shading below. So let's go find that on our picture.
So it was going uphill to the right, I think it was. I forgot. Let me look again. Yeah, it was going uphill to the right. So that would be A. And look, if you notice, A does have a solid line like we had. And it is going uphill to the right. So I would choose my A and move on to the next. So you ain't gonna lie, the trick on that one is solving for that Y, okay? Oh, look, y'all's favorite problem here. So let me write what we got. We got a ladder resting against the wall. So I got a wall here and a ladder resting up against it. They're telling me that the top of my ladder touches the wall at a height of 18 feet. All righty, let me move this out of my way here. Now it's telling me find the length of the ladder if the length of the ladder is six feet more than its distance from the wall. So I don't know that distance from the wall, so that's going to be X, and then the ladder will be X plus six. Since it was six feet more, so I'm going to show you what I got going on. All right, so y'all, here it is. My ladder's resting 18 feet up on the wall. By the length of this ladder, if it is six feet more than the distance from the wall to the ladder, okay? So this is where we're going to do our Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared because we got what you call a right triangle because of that 90 degree angle. Y'all, the only stipulation... Remember, this longest side, the hypotenuse, always has to be the C. So these sides don't matter, so I'll just call this A and B. And I'm just going to plug in what I got. So for my A, I'm going to be X. So that's going to be X squared. B will be 18. So that'll be 18 squared. That's going to equal C squared, which is my X plus 6 squared. All righty, y'all. So can't do nothing with the x squared, so I'm bringing it down. 18 squared, so let me see. 18 times 18 gives me 324. That's going to equal my x plus 6 squared. So I'm going to do that on the side here. So x plus 6 squared, I would write that twice and foil it. Are you also want to foil it, x times x is x squared. x times six is six x. Six times x is six x. Six times six, 36. And then I'm gonna add my like terms so that that gives me an x squared. Six and six, give me 12 X's plus my 36. So that right side becomes X squared plus 12 X plus 36. All right, so what's going to happen? I need to try to get everything on one side equal to zero because of the X squared terms, okay? But notice what's going to happen when I try to move the X squared to the same side, they cancel on this side, X squared's cancel on that side. So I'm only left with 324 equal to my 12X plus 36. So since the X squared terms got canceled out, all we gotta do now is solve it for one X. So I would move my 36 by subtracting. All right, y'all, let me see what that gives me. Uh, 324 minus 36. I'm gonna leave me 288 equal 
to my 12 eggs. So your final step, divide both sides by 12. So that's going to give me my X. And let's see, uh, 288 divided by 12 gives me 24. If y'all remember this, this side down here is 24. They want to know how long is that ladder. So you got to bring that 24 up here, add it to the 6. So 24 and 6 is going to give us 30 for the ladder. So y'all, we're going to go to that page and let's see, uh, 30 for me would be C. Now notice they got 24 on there because they know that some of y'all are not going to add that six to it. Okay. But remember, once you get X add the length of that ladder to that to get your final answer. All right, y'all find the domain. I got an X squared minus four sitting on the bottom. So remember to find the domain, I take that bottom, set it equal to zero. So what was that, an X squared minus four? Oh, so y'all, I'm gonna take the X squared minus four set that equal to zero. So when you only got a squared and a number, the easiest thing is to get the number on the other side. So in my case, I added four so that I get an X squared equals four. And then take a square root of both sides. So that's gonna give me my X. Now remember, square root of four will be a plus or minus and then the square root of four is two. So that means X is a negative two or a positive two. So since I'm doing a domain, I gotta get rid of both of these numbers. So remember our domain will start at negative infinity and you're going down to X's until you hit negative two. So we're going to union around negative two. From negative two, you can go until you hit positive two. So since positive two is getting kicked out, I'm going to union around positive two. And then remember from positive two, I'm heading off towards infinity. Now what's been hurting a few people in the past is they'll forget this middle section and they'll go like negative infinity to negative two, and then from two to infinity. Don't forget that middle section, okay? So let's go to the test. Yeah, a lot of times people wanna pick C when in fact it is actually A. So notice on this one, you're gonna have three intervals, the others only have two. So just think about that when you're doing that test, okay? You will have three intervals on it. Oh, here's a good fun one. So let me write this one down and we'll work this one by hand. So they're giving us F of X equals six X squared plus two X. And they're giving us the difference quotient F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. <coughs> so y'all let me work this by hand and then we'll pick our a, B, C, or D. All right, so you're given F of X. It's sitting right here. Always H on the bottom. So the first thing you got to find is the F of X plus H. So for F of X plus H, put an X plus H in for both of these X's. So six times X plus H squared plus two times X plus H. All right, so let me tell you all thing over here. X plus H squared. This is one where we worked it out. We ended up with an X squared plus two HX 
plus h squared. Everybody's going to use that to replace that x plus h squared, okay? So you bring down your 6, put in your x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And then the, bark part, the back part is 2 times x plus h. So y'all write that down. You're going to use it for that on this test just like I am, okay? Then you'll come over here and distribute the 6 through the first parentheses and the 2 through the second parentheses. So that I get a 6x squared plus 12hx plus 6h squared. That takes care of the first parentheses plus a 2x plus 2h. So y'all, here's the thing. This is now my f of x plus h. So I'm going to put that in parentheses minus the f of x stuff, and all of that will be over my h. So let me put this in first. 6x squared, 12hx, 6h squared, plus 2x, plus 2h. All right, f of x was up here. That's the 6x squared plus 2x. So, y'all, this is the point where we started canceling stuff on top. Everything in the second parentheses cancels with its same self in the first parentheses. So, this 6x squared is going to cancel with that 6x squared. Because remember, we're subtracting both of these. This is like a negative 2x. This 2x will cancel with that positive 2x. So what we did then, the only things left had the h's in them. So I got the 12hx plus the 6h squared plus the 2h, all are going to be divided by h. So the H stuff out of the first parentheses is what's left. Now, remember now, you got to take one H out of everybody since this H on the bottom applies to everybody on that top. So if I take the H out of the first term, I get a 12X plus six. We had an H squared. If you take out one H, that's going to leave. 1h. And then at the end, I had a 2h. If I take out that 1h, I'm left with a 2. So we're looking for a 12x plus 6h plus 2. All right, y'all. So let me find that. So we had a 12x plus 6h plus 2. So we're going to go with c and then move to our next. Oh, y'all, another graph. So let's see what we got, a negative four square root of x. I would probably do that on my calculator too. So I'm gonna go to the calculator. I'm gonna y equals and clear this one out. Now, on some of the newer calculators, if it leaves that triangle on the left side, go back over there and, and uh, hit enter until you get the line like I've got on mine again. All righty, y'all. So here's the thing. We have negative four. So let me go get my negative four. Square root is the second x squared key to get that little blue radical above it. And then I'm going to put my x underneath. And y'all, there was four distinct pictures. So let's just hit graph and see what happens. So notice mine's going downhill to the right in the negative sections for the y. So I'm going to go look at these pictures. Go so downhill to the right. So look, A went uphill left, 
B looks like it did what I needed downhill to the right. C is going uphill to the left, it looks like. And then D going uphill to the right. So the only one that matched my picture was B, okay? All right, y'all remember these intervals? So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for us. So increasing is worse going uphill. Decreasing downhill, constant is going straight across. So most of these are starting with the increasing. So that's this third section to the right where it's going uphill. So what I need to figure out is the X value where that starts at. So if I come straight down, y'all, that looks like four to me. So this graph starting at the X value of four starts going uphill as it heads towards infinity. So remember, four towards infinity. So at the moment, it's either gonna be B or D. They both got me increasing from four to infinity. Next they do decreasing. So this graph is coming in the left side from negative infinity and it's decreasing. Let's look on the X's down here. Y'all, that looks like it's a negative four. So it's decreasing as it comes in from negative infinity to negative four. So let's see. Uh, B had four positive infinity for increasing. It's decreasing negative infinity to negative four. D had the right increasing, but look, they're backwards on that decreasing. And they got positive infinity on decreasing, which is wrong. So the only choice at this moment is B. And then look, it's constant from negative four to four on the X's. And that's where that straight line started and ended. So y'all, the only one that makes sense for this one would be B, okay? Now, when you're doing it, your graph should look almost like mine. Remember, for decreasing, it's coming in from negative infinity to the number, okay? Increasing is starting at the number and going towards positive infinity. All right, so let's see what y'all remember on this. Uh, how can a graph of f of x equals negative x minus 8 squared plus 5 be obtained from the graph of y equals x squared? So the first move they're doing is inside those parentheses. That's the x minus 8. You're going to move it to the left. Right. Oh, no, let me see. To the right, I believe so. Yeah, you're going to move that to the right because remember when you tack the x, is it's opposite. Right. So last three answers, B, C, and D all went to the right. So how about that negative in the very front? That negative is going to reflect you over which axis? Is it the, I don't know, I'm taking a guess, the x-axis? It is the x-axis, because back then, that's all we reflected over was the x. Okay. So eight units right, reflected over the X. So y'all at that point, looks like C is my only possible answer. And then at the end, that plus five, that's gonna move you five units up, right? So it looks like the only one that'll work for that would be C. So y'all just remember that inside those parentheses is a little opposite of what you think. All right, y'all, so let's see what we got here. F of X equals X squared minus 4X plus 40. Um, so let me ask y'all, do all y'all have the quad formula on the calculators or are y'all doing it by hand? I, I do mine by hand. By hand, yes. By hand, okay, so I'm gonna switch to my pad and we'll do it by hand. 
Okay, so A for this is one, B is negative four, C is 40. So I'm using this quad formula, which is X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus four AC all over two times A. So I'll plug my numbers into that, and then we're just going to start simplifying it until we get one of them answers. So here we go, y'all. We got x equals negative b, which is a negative 4, plus or minus my square root b squared. So that'll be negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, c, which is 40 all over two times a, which was one. And if you remember, most of my work's gonna be sitting under this little square root radical, okay? So the double negative four will make that a positive four plus or minus square root. Negative four squared is a positive 16. Minus, notice this side's going to stay negative because you only got one minus over here. So negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times 40 is a negative 160. All of that, two times one, which is two. All right, y'all. So let me see what that's going to give me. 16. Minus 160. So I'm going to bring down my 4 plus or minus square root. That's going to give me a negative 144 all over my 2. So y'all, I'm down to a single number. It's time to take square roots. So what is the square root of a negative 144? Well, I. 12 I. Good job. And y'all, your test, these are all going to be negative under here. So at that point, when you take the square root, you will get an imaginary number. All that's over two. So remember, both of these parts on top are over that two. So we're going to divide them both by two to get our final answer. So four divided by two gives me a two plus or minus 12 I divided by two gives me a 6i. So we're looking for a 2 plus or minus 6i. All right, so what I say, 2 plus or minus 6i, so we're going to go with B. All right, y'all, then we would hit next. All right, let me write this one down because that's the vertex. So let's see, I've got f of x equals 4x squared minus 24x plus 33. All right, y'all, so we're going to go work this by hand, get that vertex. All righty, so the vertex formula, remember the vertex looks like an ordered pair when you're done. It's negative B over 2A, that's an A, and then F of negative B over 2A. So what that means, we use negative B over 2A to get the X value. Then we plug that value into the function to get that Y value, okay? So I'm going to start with my x value, which is the negative b over 2a. So look, a is 4 for this one. b is negative 24. And c is 33. So I'm just going to plug these into my formula. So I got a negative b, which is negative 24. So one thing on this test, you sort of got to keep up with all these negatives, okay? 
Now, 2A is just 2 times positive 4. So notice, negative times negative makes that a positive 24. And if you'll notice, just like the quadratic formula, when you got a negative B here, all it's doing is, in the long run, changing the sign of your B. If your B is negative, it turns it positive. If your B was positive, it would turn it negative, okay? All right, y'all, the bottom of 2 times 4 is 8. And let's see, 24 divided by 8 is 3. So I know my X value is 3. So now to get my Y value, I'm going to find F of 3 by putting a 3 in for both my X's. So I got 4 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3 plus 33. You know, once again, I'm doing the exponent here first. So I'm going to bring down that 4. 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. And then I'm just bringing everybody else down on that step. Now I'll multiply this and multiply this. So 4 times 9 is 36. Minus 24 times 3 is 72. Plus 33. All right, y'all, let's see what we do here. Uh, 36 minus 72 is a negative 36. Negative 36 plus 33 is a negative 3. So my y value is negative 3, so my vertex should be a positive 3, negative 3. So y'all, let's go find that. So I had, what, a positive 3, negative 3. Oh, so it looks like on that, and once I found that positive 3, I could have came and picked A, because that's the only one that had a positive 3 for my X value, okay? Oh, y'all, this one we probably don't need to. We could probably figure this one out right off the bat. So to give you factors, x plus 9, x minus 9. Remember, those are the factors. The zeros of those always had negative numbers. Well, not, not negative numbers, but they were opposite than the factors. So if your factor x plus 9 is positive, then the zero would be a negative 9. On the other factor, you got an x plus 9. Its zero would be a positive 9. So let me start with the first one, x plus 9 squared. That zero would be a negative 9. Question is, what's its multiplicity? Two. two. So it's definitely 2. So we got a negative 9 multiplicity 2. The second factor, x minus 9, would give me a positive 9. So positive 9, what's its multiplicity? Three. 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 So the second one, that's a X minus nine to the third, right? Right. So that would give you a zero of a nine. And I couldn't hear what y'all said for the multiplicity. We three. said three, but we're kind of lost. Oh, you're good. You're, it is a three. So I'll write it down if y'all are. Y'all got it right. So let me write it down. Yeah, I just don't remember working it. Uh, that way. Oh, this was your uh, 8.3, 8.4 section when we was doing all the zeros and multiplicity. All right, so I got to go down. So let me go to my pad. All right, y'all. So here's the thing. Remember, the four don't matter because it don't have a variable. So you can get rid of that four or whatever number's in the front. These are what I'm worried about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x plus 9. And since I'm finding a 0, I'm going to set it equal to 0. And then we're going to solve for the x. So y'all, only thing we're doing here is subtracting 9 from both sides. And I get x equals a negative 9. So the second factor was the x minus 9. 
I'm going to set it equal to zero. And to solve that one, I'm going to add nine to both sides. So these two answers are the zeros. So I got a zero of negative nine. So for this zero, what did y'all say my multiplicity was? Two. Two. Because remember now we're looking at multiplicities and all those are, those are just them exponents on the outside. So my under zero was a positive nine and its multiplicity y'all said was? Three. Three. So is that ringing back memories? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We did these when we was doing that section where we was doing all that foiling. And I gave you like, two or three zeros and we had to foil and foil and foil and all that fun stuff. All right, what was that? Zeros, well, let me see what's next. All right, y'all, so what y'all said, I think was A on this, right? Negative nine twice, nine, three times. All right, 16, I would probably graph. And um, let me write that down. I got G of X equals a negative X times X plus two squared yeah. times X minus one. Squared. You'll sit by me at the, at the, when it's time to eat lunch at the kitchen table. Say again. His mic is... Um... Oh, yeah, my bad. I forgot my mic was on. Oh, okay, okay. I thought y'all was asking me. Okay, so I got my equation. So now I'm going to go to my calculator. Now, one thing I want y'all to notice on this. Notice the X values go from negative 6 to 6. The Y values go from negative 240 to 240. So when I graph this, and I'm going to set that window so that my graph matches these four graphs, okay? So let's go to Y uh, calculator. So I'm on y equals, so I'm going to clear this left side here. And then we'll clear out that square root of x. So first, I'm just going to put in the equation. I had a negative x. And in parentheses, I had x plus 2. And that was squared. Then I had parentheses, X minus one. And that one was squared. Now, you want to adjust your window. So to adjust the window, you hit the window button on the top row. My X minimum was negative six. So I'm going to change that to negative six. That's the X min. Arrow down X max. Uh, it was positive six. Then skip down till you get to the Y minimum. That was a negative 240. And then the Y maximum go down and it was a positive 240. All right, y'all. So now since I got my window set, I can now hit graph and see what this will look like. So it looks like it comes down, almost makes like a straight line going through there and goes down on the right side. So let's go find that picture. Ooh, they're making this test hard on those. What I'm looking at is trying to figure out where it's hitting these sides at. So, because A and D look really close. So, let's see. I'm just going to look at the zeros. So, the positive two would have made it cross at negative two. Positive 
negative one. Because it looks like it's touching it at that negative two. Ooh, I don't like that question, but yeah. That'd be A, and then we move on, okay? Oh, I hate when we did that to y'all on some of these. All right, y'all, find the vertical asymptotes. So let me see what we got. Remember, vertical asymptotes is just like the domain. It's at the bottom equal to zero. So x squared minus 5x minus 14. We're going to set equal to zero. And then I'm going to work this one by hand. So let me go to that. All right, so I'm going to solve this by factoring. Um, so x squared is an x and an x. That sign's negative, so one's positive, one's negative. Factors of 14, that'll subtract and give me 5. Uh, that'd be what, 7 and 2. Larger number 7 is negative like the middle. 2 is positive. So then we would take both these factors and set them equal to the zero. So you know, the first one, let me subtract two from both sides. My first vertical asymptote is x equals a negative two. Solving this second, I would add seven. And my second vertical asymptote would be a seven. Now here's the thing. Look at these answers. We need negative two and seven. Be careful about D. D has the right numbers, but it's the wrong letter. We actually need negative two and seven for the X's. So you gotta pick B on that one, okay? I have a question. Yeah, I hear you. How do you make your window go back to the original window setting? Okay. So to make your window on the calculator go back to normal, let me go to my calculator. Yeah, I forgot that. But you would hit the zoom button and then number six for standard. When you do that, it'll put it back. Okay, thank you. Yo, I think the graph looks better on that than it did on the big one. Because here you can tell it's touching at negative two and positive one on this. So, whoa, okay. So that's one where uh, Math Lab sort of did us bad. Was that number 16 for this graph right here? Uh -huh, that was number 16. Okay, yeah, because that's how mine looks. I don't have a calculator. I use my uh, the Microsoft. Uh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, that was it. All right, so there was my... Um, vertical asymptote, so let's see what's coming up next. Find the requested value. So I'm going to write these numbers down real quick. My f of x equals 9x plus 6. g of x equals 9x squared plus 9x minus 6. They want me to find G of F of a nine. All right, so I'm gonna do this one by hand. That's the only way I got to do this one. So remember this lingo means that we're finding G of F of nine. That means we're gonna find F of nine first. Whatever we get from F of nine, We'll then put into our G equation. So work to F first. So we're going to find F of nine here. So F of nine will be nine times X, which is nine plus six. All right, y'all, nine times nine is what? 81. 81 plus six gives me 87. Woo, this is going to be a big number because now I got to find G of a 87. So that'll be 9 times 87 squared plus 9 times that 87 minus 6. So y'all, once again, I'm going to do that exponent first. 
Woo, okay, so I got nine times whatever, 87 times 87 is. So let me see, 87 times 87. Woo, that is 7,569. 7,569, yep. And I'm bringing everything else down. So now I'll multiply. So I get, woo, 68,121. All right, nine times 87 is a 783 minus my six. All right, y'all, so let's see what we get. 68,121 plus 783 equals 68,904 minus that six. I'm getting a 688. Woo, 98. So math lab didn't like me very good for that big number. So let me go see if that's one of my choices. Oh, y'all look at that. 68,898 is D. So we choose D and move to the next. Now the next one is the same thing, but notice they didn't give me a number to put in. So let me write f of x is what? 4x squared plus 6x plus 8. g of x is a 6x minus 3. They want me to find g of f of x. So all we can do to this one is pretty much simplify it. Um, we're not going to be able to get a single number out of this one. So this is also like G of F of X. We would start with F of X. Since we can't do nothing with this F of X, we'll put the whole F equation into the G. What that means is I'm gonna take this whole equation and replace that one X on the G equation with it. So here we go, g of f of x will equal six times my x, which is four x squared plus six x plus eight, and then minus three. So remember, you're going to take your whole f of x and put it into the one x, okay? So it still looks like a six times the big x minus three. All right, next you're going to, Distribute your six through the first parentheses. So let's see, six times four gives me 24 X squared. Six times six will give me 36 X. Six times eight gives me 48. At the end is a minus three. So y'all, we got one more step. Um, let's see. Uh, and that's at the end, you got numbers that can add together or subtract. So I'm gonna bring down my 24X squared, bring down my plus 36X, and that's gonna be a positive, let's see, 48 minus three, that's gonna give me what, a positive uh, 45. So we're looking for a 24X squared, 36X plus 45. That's as far as we can simplify this. So let's go find that answer. All right, so 24x squared, 36x, and 45 looks like I'm going with C. All right, y'all, then you're going to click next. All right, so here's another one. Let me write this one down because I'm doing this one by hand f of x equals 5x minus 3. Now, never choose not one to one. Everybody will get an answer on this, okay? But not one to one is not the answer you're going to get. All 
All righty, so since we're finding the inverse, the first thing you're going to do is replace the f of x with the y, and you're going to get y equals 5x minus 3. So replace f of x with y. Then I came in and I switched the y and the x. So switch y and the x. So if you do that, you're going to get x equals 5y minus 3. At this point, I'm just going to solve for my y. So you all to solve that for the y. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So notice over here, we're going to get our x plus 3. That's going to equal to 5y. And then final step, divide everybody by 5. So your x plus 3 will divide by 5. Your 5y will divide by 5. So that cancels. Cannot do anything to that left side. So that's going to be x plus 3 over 5. Then officially, my last step, y'all, was to replace the y with f negative 1 of x. Remember, that's my inverse notation so that I get f negative 1 of x equals the x plus 3 over 5. Okay, so you're going to get an answer like this. You cannot put not one to one because that is automatic miss, okay? So y'all, what we get? We had an X plus three over five. So we're going to go with B. And I'll tell you the truth. Your answer will always look either like B or C. Okay, it won't be like D and it won't be A, okay? So depending on... If you, if you started out with subtraction, you'll end up with addition. If you started out with addition, you would end up with something like C, okay? Remember, inverses are always sort of like the opposite, okay? All right, y'all, I'm going to write this one down because I'm going to my calculator on it. That is what? 3 to the X minus 1. And if you remember... All that minus one is doing to my graph is moving it to the right one unit. So let's go graph it and see what happens. I'm gonna go to y equals and clear that. All right, so I had a three, so I'm gonna hit three and then use my exponent caret and put in an x minus one. All right, y'all, so I got their equation in, so I'm going to go hit graph. And notice, all it did was barely move my graph to the right. It's hard to tell, but it crosses the y-axis usually at 0, 1. And you can tell it's pretty much down a little bit on that. So I'm going to go find one of those pictures. So let me zoom A up a little bit. Hey, let's see, is the only one that looks right, right? The number B looks like it went down a little. C looks like it went left. And y'all, something they did to D looks like they flipped it and did all kinds of stuff. So the only one that matches my graph would be A. Oh, y'all, what I got? Two to the three equals A. Now, remember, I'm converting this to a log equation, okay? So since I'm converting this to a log equation, I'm going to write log down here. So I need the base of my logarithm. What are y'all putting? Two. Two. Okay. The result is the A, and all that equals your exponent of? Three. 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 Now, all they're doing in math lab, 
they're reversing it and they're putting three equals log base two of eight. So the multiple choice questions they got on this one, always put the exponent first and then the log part. But y'all, they're the same, they're just flipping sides, okay? So let me show you. So see how each of these, they got the exponent first and then the log stuff. All right, so we have three equals log two of A. So y'all, that looks like D. And then we're moving on. Oh, y'all just did one like this on my test. So let me write that down. Log B, I got an M6, P7 over N8, B4. All right, so remember, I'm going to distribute log B to all four of these factors. If they're on top, they're positive. If they're on bottom, they'll be negative. So I'm going to start with my top. I'm going to do log B of M to the 6 plus log B of P to the 7. So these were both positive. Now I'll start my negative. Minus log B of N to the 8 minus my log B of B to the 4. Now the fun part, we're going to move exponents down to the front, down to the front, down to the front. And this one, log B of B to the fourth, in the long run, what's that equal? Four. Four. So definitely. So remember, on the end, when they match, all that's going to be left is that four. So let me bring my exponents down. So six log B of M plus seven log B of P minus eight log B of N. And like y'all said, minus four. So at that point, we're going to go look for one of these answers. Now watch it. Sometimes they'll put a multiply here instead of a plus. So you got to watch for that. Sometimes they're putting the exponents back here in the wrong place. Um, so let's go see. So there's no way I'm choosing A. B has a plus four at the end. Everything else looked good on it. C is one I'm talking about. Look, they got a multiplication in between the log B, M, and the seven. So y'all, the only one that's got everything I needed in the right order would be D. All right, let me write this equation. This is B equals 9300 E to the 0 0.05 T. Now, where T is measured in years, how many books will the library have after five years? So y'all, all we're doing on this one, let me go to my paper, is plugging in that five for that T. So I'm just gonna plug this five in for that T and figure out what I get. So I'm gonna punch in 9300 E 0.05 times five. That's all you're doing on this equation is plugging in the years for your T. All right, now I'm going to bring this. Let me see if y'all can see that. Can y'all see that calculator screen? Yes. All right, so here we go, 9,300. Now, since this E has an exponent, I'm going to hit second LN on the left side, and that brings up the E with the exponent. And all I got to do is do 0 0.05 times 5. Now, y'all, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something on the paper here. If you got an old calculator, it's going to do 9300E, and then it's going to um, have the carrot for the exponent in a, in a parentheses. On the old calculators, when you got parentheses like that, you got to do the 0 0.05 times 5 and then shut your parentheses. 
And that's only on the older ones. Most of y'all got the new ones, so you'll punch it in like I did on mine. Because, see, we stay up there in the exponents. All right, y'all, so let's see how many books they'll have after five years. And they're rounding it to the nearest book. So that'd be no decimal places after. So I got a 11941. On the other side, I got a four. So I don't have to round up. I'm going to keep it the same. I'm going to have 1, 000, uh, 11,941. All right. So let me go to that and see if that's on there. So 11,941, so that'd be B on that one. And then we move to next. All right, y'all, my last question. So let me see what I got written down here. I've got two to the nine minus three X equals eight. All right, so I'm going to work that by hand again. So the trick on this one is to rewrite that right side using two as the base. So that eight could be written as two to what exponent? Three. Two to the third. Uh -huh. So I can rewrite it as two to the third. So I get two to the nine minus three X equals two to the third. So y'all remember my base is match. Since my base is match, that means the exponents are equal to each other. So nine minus three X equals three. Okay, so exponents are equal. So now I'm just solving this for the X. So I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides. I'm going to get my negative 3x is going to equal what a negative 6. And then y'all divide by that negative 3 and be done. So it looks like all these negatives are going to cancel making that positive. So 6 divided by 3 gives me a 2. So let's, listen, on this one, you can also check answers. So put a 2 in for the x. Three times two is six. Nine minus six is three. And we know that two to the third power equals eight. Okay? So you just got to look through their answers they're giving you. So let me see. So so on this one, or I think I might just forgotten. Okay. How do we get that uh, the exponent of two is three out of the nine minus three X? Say again now. I said, I might have forgotten uh, the formula or the process for how do we get to the two thirds out of the uh, two exponent nine minus three X? Oh, so this point, since this base matched that base, anything? No, I mean, at the beginning when it was two, you know, the original. Uh, oh, how did I turn this eight into this? Yeah. Okay. So on this question, since you have a base of two on this side, my goal is to rewrite that eight using a two as its base. So I've okay. had to figure out how many times I multiply two together to get an eight. Okay. So I did two times two, that gave me four. So that was two of them. Four times two gave me eight. So since I multiplied that two, three times, I made that exponent a three. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right, then we'll meet. Then that, that allowed me to set these exponents equal since my bases were the same. All right, y'all, so we're looking for what? A X equals two on that. So it looks like C was the one. But y'all, that make, once you, if you put a three in for that X, three times three is nine, nine minus nine is zero. Two to the zero does not equal eight. Two to the zero equals one. If you put a four in there, three times four is 12. Nine minus 12 gives you negative three. Well, ain't no way you're going to have negative exponents to make an eight. So if you put the two in, it would have worked. And then negative two would have made it too big. 
because that negative three times negative two would have made that a six. Nine and six would have gave you 15. And y'all, two to the 15 is not an eight on that, okay? All right, y'all, that would be our 25 questions. So, any questions on that? All right, y'all, so I will send y'all a copy of this in about, takes me about 30, 45 minutes to get them uploaded. Remember, um, final exam is going to open Wednesday morning. Final exam will be due Sunday night, okay? Now, remember, it's going to cut off at midnight, so you want to start a good hour or two before midnight if, you, if you're pressed in time, okay? I have a question about the last test. Yeah, I hear you. Um, one I got wrong. Um, on number 24, uh -huh. um, I put, I think, S equals and then the number in the answer box. I got uh -huh. the number right, but it counted me wrong because I put S equal. Yeah, so I had another one on here wanting me to look also. So I'm going to look. Um, if y'all got any on y'all's test that are like that, I'll give you credit because y'all got the right answers. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Tamika and you both, I'm going to look at y'all's for sure. Um, so hopefully sometime tonight I can get them in there. If not, I'll do it first thing in the morning when I go to my office. And then I'll start adding the bonuses for y'all that sent me that bonus, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. All righty, no problem. I missed the bonus again. <laughs> so you just send those through email? Yeah, go through your email and look for it and, and send it to me. Okay, I always forget about that. <laughs> All right, y'all. So let me quit recording so that'll make this...